What's good, Yu Gi Oh! Duelist, Jack C3 here, back with another video. And today I'm going to be talking, I'm going to start a new kind of um, neat, like little series of videos I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm going to call them like, I think, events tips. Um, and basically, I'm just going to talk about uh, things that are, you know, that I have had experience with that are good to do um, before an event and uh, during an event, you know, all that kind of stuff, like what you need to bring to an event, what you need to do before, like in preparation, um, in terms of like deck wise and, you know, th like things you need to be aware of, um, like meta calls, which is big, big, uh, topic and th me uh, mentality, play mentality. So the thing I'm going to start off with today is, um, you know, like deck choosing, meta calls, that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's a very important point. You may have heard like a lot of this before, but I'm just going to rehash it, um, you know, with my own personal experiences um, and input on the matter. So, yeah, I'll just get started. Um, thing I'd like to say before the video starts is uh, if I may, if I say, if I come off a bit, um, you know, like know it all or like cocky kind of that kind of sense, I don't mean to be. It, I have a lot of experience playing Yu Gi Oh! I've played for a while, played in a lot of big events. And I've done well in most of them, I can say. And, um, yeah, I think this is a very important topic. Um, playing the deck is, playing the right deck is important for you. If you play a deck that you're comfortable with, and it's actually, like, decent against the meta, um, you know, you should do well. But, uh, like, you know, and if you're the be if you're one of the best players, um, in the world, or in your country, but you play the wrong deck, the, the, the wrong deck for you, like you play one that you're not comfortable with, or you play just a bad deck in general, um, it's probably not going to do very well, and that's unfortunate. Uh, so yeah, I'll just get started. So the first event I'm going to talk about was a while ago, in early, very early 2009, I think it was like January um, or so. The, the big, really big deck at the moment, like that point, was Light Swans. Um, you know, I think it had just came out like a few months prior, or like a month prior or something, a couple of months prior or something like that. Uh, but it was very big, very expensive, and very, 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 very good. Um, so yeah, yeah, like three Charter Light Brigade and like three JD, three Lumina, um, three everything really. It was just a ama an amazing deck, very fast, and yeah, like I said, very good. So that was probably the main deck, the most relevant deck at the event. The deck I decided to play there was uh, Little City. Little City was basically it's it was it's like hero beat. Um, it has hero cards. Uh, instead of playing like Miracle Fusions and stuff like Gemini Spark, um, maybe Gemini Spark was back around. I really can't remember. Like that was so long ago. But um, you played on um, like Skyscraper and Elemental Hero Captain Gold, so your monsters like Stratos and Alias could get over things like Stardust Dragon, Dark Arm Dragon, because Teledab was um still around, and um other things like you know like uh, Captain Gold with um Skyscraper could kill Judgment Dragon and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I was very comfortable with this deck. I um, I love this deck a lot. I had the option of either playing Little City or I, I could have played Teledad. Um, I decided I decided to play Little City, uh, which was I felt like was a bad bad mistake on my part because it had a very good Teledad matchup, but it didn't have a good Light Swan matchup, and that's where I really messed up because the meta was basically like a ton and a ton of Light Swan. A little bit of Teledad, and then just like rogue decks, like Monarch, Skill, like Monarch, Skill Drain, Burn, and then like Little City. Um, but anyway, I played the Dragon Duel um, on the Saturday of the weekend. I ended up coming in top eight. Uh, the reason why I think was I was just very, I was very good for my age. I was about eleven at the time, maybe twelve, I'm not sure. But I was very good for my age. Um, you know, I could I could really think about plays a lot. Um, I wasn't very, I wasn't a good player. Um, but I was, yeah, I was, like, good for an 11-year-old, I guess you could say. Probably better than most 11 or 12-year-olds that were playing in the Dragon Duel. So, um, it turned out, like, all, the Dragon Duel was just filled with Lights 1. Like, absolutely filled. Um, and the prize was, like, a crush card. Uh, a show and jump crush card, prize card. So, um, I, I lost in top 8. Partly to, due to a bad ruling. But, um, you know, I felt like if I had played Teledad, I'd probably have won. Or at least come, like, top 4. Maybe even second. Um... But yeah, I played the wrong deck of that event, and it, it cost me. So that was that was a really bad medical on my part. And uh, yeah, I feel like that's one of the only really bad medicals I've made. 
which is a good thing, kind of. But, you know, it happens. That was a while ago, though. And then, uh, so the next really big event I did well in, or was relevant, kind of, to this discussion, um, or I even played in, actually, <laughs> uh, was this, was Nationals last year. I played Rabbit. Um, you know, I played a lot of tech cards, which, you know, a lot of people weren't playing at the time, and I just... I felt like my deck was very good. A lot of people were saying that well, Chaos Dragons was the best deck, and um, you know Rabbit had a bad Chaos Dragon matchup, and you'd be silly to play Rabbit. But um, you know, I thought I'm very comfortable with this deck. I actually feel like it has a good Chaos Dragon matchup, and the only matchup I'm worried about is a mirror match because I feel like I can bet, beat Insectors and Windups relatively easily. Uh, so all I did was gear my matchup, gear my deck um, for for the mirror match game one, and that ended up doing well. I ended up winning the event, so that was pretty good. I feel like I picked the right deck, um, and yeah, I was very confident in my deck, which is a thing as well. Uh, you know, being confident in your deck and you know playing something you're comfortable with is um, is very important. But one thing I like to stress, uh, I haven't heard many people say, I don't think, is being over over comfortable with your deck. Um, not like in the sense that you know every play and you shouldn't know every play in your deck. You should definitely know every play. Uh, but the thing is, if you're over comfortable and you're attached to it, you might play something like Little City at an event with Light's Horn, um, and it's just the wrong deck. Like, I love Little City, but I probably I probably played it better than I did Teledad. You know, I just, like, I absolutely loved every card in it, but it wasn't the right deck. It wasn't very good. But, you know, if you play a deck, say, today, you play, like, um, in this meta, or post-Tachyon, you play, like, Wind-Ups post-Tachyon Galaxy, because you like Wind-Ups, you're just gonna, like, get destroyed, because... Basically, every deck shits on wind-ups. I mean, everything's just much faster, and, you know, it has, it's like, full power behind it, and, yeah. So if you play, like, a deck like wind-ups post-tacking on Galaxy, because, you you know, you're very you're very comfortable with the deck, and you like it a lot, that's being, I guess, like, what I would say, over-comfortable, or, um, you know, attached to it, and you, you'll probably just not win, which is something you shouldn't do. You should definitely, you know, open up your eyes when you're picking your deck for, a de for an event. So the next event I played was Oceanics, which was a month later, and a lot has actually changed in that month. Uh, a lot of my views on decks had changed. I viewed that Chaos Dragons was actually a lot more dangerous than I thought it was. Um, still wasn't the best deck, I don't think, and I also had a bad wind-up matchup, which is very important. Uh, I also thought that Rabbit actually lost a lot of its power, because a lot of the new wind-up versions and wind-up decks actually had a good uh, Dino Rabbit matchup, is what I viewed. What I thought, and I thought the windups were just too good enough to play. Um, I was very confident with the deck, testing it the weekend of, um, so like the Thursday and Friday before the event. I was testing in my local card store, and you know a lot of people saw me playing this deck, and they're like, "Why, why aren't you playing your, you know, your rabbit deck that you won with?" Like, and a lot of people were telling me to play my rabbit deck, but you know I just didn't feel it. I didn't think it was very good anymore. And I thought windups, even though windups were very expected, uh, which is another thing I want to touch on, another general topic. Um, even though a deck's expected, like in today's meta, you could say Mermail. If the deck's just way too good, and you know how to play it well, just play it. Like, who cares if people are going to side cards for it? You know, people side, like, 3D Fissure, 3 Banisher for, for Mermel today. And those, like, 3D Fissure and 3 Banisher are literally cards that read against the Mermel player. Like, you cannot play your... You. If those cards are up, you cannot play, like, your deck. Um, but Mermel still wins events, like, still wins every event, just because of how good the deck is. Um, and because people who, who know how to play it do well. So, yeah. I ended up playing this, I lost in top 16 unfortunately, but um, I felt like it was the right choice for the event, and then, you know, I, I, I think I did well. Uh, the next kind of, I guess it's not really like that bit of a, big an event, but I played in the regionals um, with Insecta. It was very, it's like, no one else was playing Insecta, except my friend who, like me and him, played the same deck. Um, and, you know, no one expected it, which is a good, very good thing if you play a rogue deck. That's also um, a thing to consider. You know, if you're if you're trying to build a deck for a tournament, if you play a rogue deck, you gotta you gotta see what the matchups are like. You know, if ha if it's good against the meta, and if it is, maybe you know, the best option is to play a rogue deck. Maybe you know you don't look you go you don't go on YouTube, and you don't search up the um the best deck. Um, you know, if you're not comfortable with it, um, I don't like to use this term, but like you know maybe you don't net deck. Uh, net decking is very like, I don't know. It's just annoying when I hear people say that because, um. Most of the time, you know, the right thing to do is play the best deck. And if that happens to come from someone else, then so be it. Like, I want to give myself the best chance of winning, so I'll play the best deck, you know, the deck I feel it's the best at that time. 
And if, you know, if that's like all over the internet, then whatever, it's all over the internet. I'm not going to play a deck for the sake of being different, for the sake of being original. But, you know, like I said, if a rogue deck like Insectors um, is good enough, which I thought it was, um, then you can play it. And it certainly gives it has, certainly has its advantages because not many people will be signing for it. And some people might not even know, it will, know what the deck does. Um, I feel like most people know, would have known what Insectors did because of their dominance in the uh, March 2012 format. But, um, yeah, um, this was in the September 2012 format, by the way, so it was after um, the deck got hit, so, you know, obviously it wasn't very popular. But, uh, yeah, I did well on that, I top-aided, um, so did my friend who was playing the same deck, just because the deck was, like, very unexpected, and it had, a like, an almost auto-win Mermel matchup, which is, like, extremely relevant, because it's, like, the best deck. Mermel is obviously crazy. It also had a very good wind-up matchup, because it, uh, you could side three rivalry, and you could basically just, like, pop this shit, um, which was cool. So the last day, uh, event or deck I want to talk about in my experience um, was a regional about a month ago, or yeah, I think it was about a month ago. Uh, I played Mermails. Uh, like I said, like I've been saying for the whole video, Mermails like the best deck this format. Um, I would probably play it at uh, any event I could if Australia had any more events before um, Tacom Galaxy got released. But the thing is, was I uh, I wasn't very um experience with the deck. I was, you know, I just started playing it, I just picked it up, and yeah, like I said, I wasn't experienced with it, I didn't know many of the cards, I didn't know, any, like, many of the plays, um, I was certain, like, a month ago, I was, you know, I was good at the game, and I still am, I, I think anyway, uh, but I just did not know how to play this deck, I didn't know all the interactions, all the little, like, kind of tricks with it, and that's a big reason why I didn't end up doing well, I think I went, I, I won the first two rounds, and then, I lost the first, the set, like the second two rounds, um, you know, like they were kind of like bullshit sort of losses. Like I got pr like kind of unlucky, but the thing is, I could have played a lot better with this deck. I could have probably won game, like a game or two that I didn't, and that ended up costing me a match loss. Um, so yeah, just because that's this is another general thing I want to talk about. Just because the deck is the best doesn't mean you have to play it. You know, you have to know what the deck does. You don't just buy Mermails, blindly play it like I did, and lose. That's You shouldn't do that. And that was a mistake on my part. And I won't do that again, obviously. Uh, I was very... You know, I learnt from it. And, yeah. It sucked not topping a regional. It stuffed the last regional in Melbourne before um, Nats. But, what can you do? Um, anyway, I feel like I've covered most of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, sorry if I ramble a lot. But the main things I think I went over were... Um, uh, I don't. I don't think I've actually talked about this, but yeah, one thing. I don't. Know, just let me know if you like in the comments if I talked about this. But um, what kind? It, it goes on the playing a deck you're comfortable with. But the uh, thing is, don't play a deck that like your friends say are the best. Don't play a deck that your friends say are the best. Um, so if you're playing, you're playing Five Fist this format. You'd, your friends are like, yo, you should play Mermel because it's like much better. You know, while that may be true, Mermel might be a better deck. But if you're not comfortable with Fire Fist, like, they can't know if you're comfortable with Fire Fist or not unless you tell them. So if you don't say anything and you're just like, yeah, maybe I should play Mermel, and they keep they keep testing it, and you see they're doing well with Mermel because they know how to play the deck, and you're like, yeah, I'll switch to Mermel, um, you know what? You might not do well. You probably would have done well better playing, probably would have done better playing Fire Fist. Um, so don't just, like, assume your friends always know what they um, always know best, and they, like, you and your friends always have the same play style. Uh, don't switch decks just based on your friends. Go with your instinct most of the time. But if you're playing a deck that's like really, really bad this format, like I said, you know, if you're playing a deck like Scraps this format and it's just awful, and your friends tell you to change decks, then listen to them. Like, just realize that your deck's shit and you're like too over attached to it, um, you know, and you should just stop playing it. Uh, one thing you should listen to, though, is um, card suggestions. Not deck, you shouldn't change your deck usually, but you should listen to cards suggestions. I've listened to um, I know when I, I was playing in WCQ and Nationals, um, two of my friends who were kind of my teammates at the time, uh, and still are, they helped me with a lot of card decisions that I was kind of iffy on, and they ended, all of them ended up working out very well, and contributed to my success in those tournaments, and you know, it was just good, like I was, I, they, you know, they gave me, like, um, they suggested cards, Gave me reasons why they were good and bad and stuff, like legitimate reasons. I tested them out, which was the main thing. I, I made sure I liked it in the deck, and it worked out. It ended up working out. 
So, you know, there are some times where you listen to your friends and there's some times where you don't. But, um, yeah, those are the main things I want to point out. Uh, like, listening to your friends, being comfortable with your deck, making the right meta call, which is extremely um, important. You need to know, your, know the, the general meta, like, all over the world. Um, and then you need to know your local meta. So stuff like, do many people play Dark Worlds, Samurais, like, Karakuri, all that stuff. You need to know, um, that's what you need to know about decks going into an event. The next uh, video I'm going to do in this series, I think, will be, like, player mentality. So things like mental things going on, and then probably the, like, the last one or second last one I'll do is just like what you need to bring and stuff, which is like less relevant, but like, you know, it's still just kind of there. Anyway, um, let me know if you like this video. Um, comment if you want me to do anything specific, uh, or if you thought I missed anything on this topic. Uh, like it, the video if you liked it. Until next time, uh, just hit the subscribe button.